welcome to the Lotco Business Podcast, a show all about helping you as a retailer, brand, or creative understand the actual business side of running your business. I offer straightforward, practical advice about the nitty gritty of making money from your creative passion. We will be covering bite-sized business and marketing lessons, as well as interviews with experts and trailblazers in the fashion, homewares, and design industries. My name is Melissa Robbins. I'm a business coach, color-loving, non-coffee-drinking Melbourneian. Let's get into it. Today, I have a special guest with me, Samantha Taylor. She is going to be sharing so much um, information with us today, all about email marketing. Now, Samantha, can you tell me a little bit about you, about your background and how you got into this line of work? Of course. Hi, Mel. How are you going? Hi to everyone listening. So I have always been involved in marketing. I've gone from commercial marketing to marketing with some really large Australian brands. And then I made the decision to really launch into email marketing over the COVID period. We all had to pivot during that time. Mm -hmm. And that was my biggest pivot. And email marketing is something that I've always enjoyed. And I've just seen the potential in it. And it's just grown and grown. So now I specialize in an email marketing platform called Klaviyo. Um, purely because it just has the best results for my clients. And yeah, that's a little bit about that. Mm. And what sort of clients do you work with? What sort of businesses? So I work predominantly, well, only with product-based businesses. I do tend to lean towards female-led businesses. Mm -hmm. Um, That's just the way it's worked for me. Yeah. So no particular preference there. It's just the way that it's worked and all product-based. Yeah, amazing. Clearly why we uh, why I've got you on the show today because most of my clients are product-based businesses and, you know, either they've got their own retail store or they've got their own e-commerce store or they've got a combination of both. And as you know, which because we've talked about this previously, I'm passionate about email marketing too and how much it can impact your brand and how much it can impact your sales. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, it's definitely something that people don't necessarily, they know they need to do it, but they're just sort of either not quite sure how to go about it or they're not quite sure what they should be sending or they're not quite sure, you know, what systems to use and all that sort of stuff. So let's get into all of that now. All the juicy stuff. So why, um, what do you actually do? Like what's your actual, um, yeah, yeah, all the juicy stuff, yes, exactly. So what do you actually do, Zach? Okay, so what I do is people will come to me and a lot of them haven't started email marketing or they are just overwhelmed. Like they're just in a massive fear, like a state of overwhelm and it's all a little bit scary. So essentially I do everything from a complete set I can't talk. I do everything from a complete setup to then managing their monthly email marketing campaigns. So people come to me and they're at different stages. So for a lot of them we're starting from scratch and then others we're just making changes and tweaking their existing systems and then we usually mm-hmm. launch into working together one on one to create campaigns. Yes, amazing. And so why 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 email marketing? Like why do you believe it is so important? I am so passionate about owned marketing. At any stage, Mark Zuckerberg can go, oh, that's it, I've had enough, and mm-hmm. pull the plug on Instagram and Facebook and so many people would lose their businesses yes. overnight. I've seen it happen. I've seen how people go into absolute panic mode when Instagram goes down for two hours. Yeah. If you have owned marketing, you own it. No one can take it from you. Mm-hmm. And it also generates 82% more profit than Instagram marketing. So there's 100% a place for it. And it should be, and I firmly believe it should be the primary primary way to advertise. Yes. And this is a thing, like, and I guess, I mean, I I have been around a long time in business and I had my businesses businesses before Instagram, before Facebook. So for me, it's like, well, yeah, of course, there's lots of other ways to advertise. There's lots of other ways to do things. Um, You know, my my retail store relied on, you know, connections with customers and and selling online, but also having that email um, database of people to let them know what was going on in the store and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, of course, if you've come in and you've run your business and you've had this free opportunity to use this free service like Instagram or, you know, social media in general, Facebook. Facebook, TikTok, whatever it might be, you just think, well, why would I not do that? Because that's where I can reach so many more people. But as you say, it's that owned um, real estate. Uh, You're in control of it. You get to determine, you know, when you send things, what you're sending. Of course, you do that with social, but you just got much more control if, if things go astray in the other versions, right? 
Hundred percent. There's so much. I'm seeing so much fatigue on social media. Mm -hmm. There's so many people that have had enough of the endless scroll, and email marketing allows us to connect with our customer just that little bit more. We can tailor exactly what they're seeing as well. So one customer may see something completely different from another customer, and you don't have that ability on social media. Everyone sees the same thing. Mm, yeah. So really segmenting your audience and making sure that you don't send everything to every person. Hundred percent. It an imp, like an email is so much more impactful if the person receiving it is interested in the topic. So I really encourage huge segmentation, and that can be segmentation into country. That can be segmentation into what styles of clothing they like. If it's a shoe brand, what size shoe they are. Only sending information that's relevant to the customer, because nine times out of ten, that will result in a sale, because you're sending make sure that they want to hear. Mm. Yes, yeah, so it's much more impactful because it's really what they want or it's, it's relevant to them. It's relevant. And they're more likely to open, keep opening, right, when they get relevant information. Exactly. There's nothing worse than with an email. Like with an email, we have to worry so much about spam filters. Like every email that I send is tested rigorously. Like it is just tested to make sure that it passes through all the spam filters. Essentially, if you're sending one blanket email to everyone in your audience, if they're not opening that, that's bringing your spam rating down. So that's going to send all of your emails to the spam promotions folder, and that's what we don't want. Mm, okay, something to avoid. So are there any little tips on that? Like what would be, is there partic particular words? Or um, I don't know that it's a whole process, but is there a few little things you could talk about? 100%. I think the biggest thing would to be is to always make sure that your audience is engaged. I highly suggest sending a list to a 120-day engaged audience. So what mm. you do is obviously I know how to do this with Klaviyo, but mm. any email, email platform that you use, you'll be able to segment a list of everyone that has opened an email in 120 days. That is your most engaged list. Otherwise, you're sending to people that aren't opening your emails and it's crickets and it's bringing down your entire open rate. Yeah. And I guess that's where people are afraid to like lose people, but they're better off not having those people on their list if they're not engaged. And because it, uh, it, it makes it all the emails that you are sending get to the right people as well. 100%. Last week, I deleted three and a half thousand people from a customer's email list mm -hmm. purely because these people weren't opening their emails and they were paying to have them mm. on the list. So yeah. what we do is we, I really highly recommend having what we call a sunset flow. So that's everybody that isn't engaging with you after a certain amount of time. So if they haven't engaged with you for three months, you send them through this sunset flow, you offer them one last chance to be mm. part of the community and that may be a discount or a gift with purchase and if they don't engage with you always put a time limit on this I put a time limit of 72 hours mm -hmm. if they don't engage in 72 hours then essentially they're gone harsh they're gone. yeah but necessary but necessary I get I get those from from on my email list because I'm on quite a few yeah. um and then I get them and I'm like oh yeah yeah I still want to be on there yes I do you know like keep me on please and a lot of people just like there's so many emails landing in people's inboxes now sometimes people can't keep up with what they want to be on and what they mm. don't, which, again, is why segmentation is so important so you're only sending relevant information. Yep. okay. So you talk, you've talked about a few times uh, the Clavio. So tell me a little bit about, and just as a general, actually, we'll just go back a second. So um, when we talk about Clavio, that is, I've got two different term um, acronyms here. So you've got an EMS and an ESP, so like email management service or email mm -hmm. service provider, like they're both the same thing, right? 100%. Yeah. And so a few versions I've worked with, like, yeah, clients work with Clavio, which I see as a um, the best e-commerce sort of platform. Yes. But if you are starting out and you're not doing anything right now, I also suggest Flowdesk because it's an easy one for people to manage and it's got great templates and it's a, a cost effective. Flowdesk is brilliant for starting. Yeah. It's a good cost effective way to get started as well. So we'll put links for both of those in there. But yeah, obviously for you who you're managing this for your clients and you're working with product based e commerce clients, Clavio is the one that you work with. So what does it set how does that set it apart from other platforms? Okay, so Clavio is actually the recognized platform for Shopify. The majority of my customers have Shopify websites. Shopify have actually invested yeah. in Clavio to make sure that everything that runs through Clavio is optimized mm. for Shopify, which is brilliant. So the level of segmentation that we can develop in Clavio for Shopify is amazing. Like I can literally right, okay. follow a customer's journey from browsing the store to when they complete a purchase at checkout. It is amazing. 
And that is where it stands out, the ability to segment at different points in the journey. We can trigger customers that have abandoned carts, that have browse abandonment. There's so many different things, and we can then segment that over customers that look at products over X amount of dollars. And the level of segmentation through Clavio is what keeps it apart from everything else. Yeah, okay. And obviously those things, you know, they're all those automation sort of Thing flows that should mm-hmm. be set up in terms of your business. So, as you say, that browser uh, browser abandonment, the cart abandonment, obviously welcome series should be set up. All those things should be set up as automations, and then you've also got your um, your content you're creating on a regular basis, as well as sales and promos and stuff. One hundred percent. The minimum amount of flows, like autom- like mm-hmm. automations, that a client should have would be eight. Eight. And that would be one hundred percent. That would be your welcome flow, your post purchase flow, your thank you flow, your abandoned cart flow, your browse abandonment flow, your sunset flow, and your upsell flow. Okay, perfect. Yes, that makes sense. Yes, and that's your minimum. Yeah. Okay. One hundred percent, especially with clothing brands and things. What we're trying to do is we're trying to keep customers. Mm. So your post-purchase flow should be talking to them about how to care for their items, Mm -hmm. how to look after things, all of the follow-up service. You can automate all of this. And it's what keeps you apart. You can't do that in an Instagram post. And it's also, you know, once they're set up, they're they're working for you constantly and they're bringing you revenue and generating income from you constantly. So it is making money ways. Yeah, set up, but it is the whole thing of there's always so much to do in when you're running a business, when you're running a product-based business, and if you're a solopreneur. So how can you use automation to make your money, as you say, when you're sleeping and have it set up in that first place in the first time, and then it will just continue to work for you? 100%. And I think that's the most important thing is people go, oh, I can't really afford to set these up. To be honest, you can't afford not to set them up Mm. because if you have a solid email automation set up, it will pay for itself within the first three months. Yeah, yeah. Because the amount of money I've seen brands leave on the table from not having card abandonment and browse abandonment emails set up would blow your mm, mind. Yeah, and what it can bring in and what it can convert. And and I guess that's where people being afraid of like sending too much to their customers or worrying about um, spamming them. And it's like you are – most of the time people – I mean, obviously, there's a whole range of reasons why people abandon card or abandon, you know, their browsing. But – Often it's just because of distraction and so so much else going on. It's not that they're not necessarily interested, but there's, you know, you're helping your customer by showing it to them again. Exactly, 100%. And there's so many things. Like there's so many triggers that you can set up. So you can set up an automatic, like a cart abandonment email to send an hour after. You can have a look at your customer behaviour and it might be that you send it three hours after. Mm -hmm. It really just depends. You can tailor down to exactly what your customer is doing. Yeah. And okay, I think great. that's where the power lies in email marketing. Yeah, all right. And so why do you think business owners find it so hard creating content for email marketing? I think people struggle with not wanting to spam yeah. people like you just mentioned before and they worry that what they have to say isn't yeah. enough. That's why we really segment down to audiences. So we can have a look at the VIP customers. We can look at the customers that engage with you weekly and we can tailor something to them. Then we can look at everyone else and we can have a look at what they've looked at. And it's all about quality content. Like I do not believe for a second that no. you just send yep. anything. You need to offer suggestions. And there's so many ways we can do that. Like for clothing, mm. for like for clothing shops, style tiles are mm. an amazing way to do that. Show people how to wear things. For lifestyle-based brands, it's showing Mm -hmm. how to use the product. And there's so many ways that you can do that that people actually want to know about. So I think that's really important. And that's, you know, I I work on this in my Know Your Email Marketing program. It's like let's come up with what sort of content is relevant to your customers. Let's go through what are some, um, as you say, inspirational or style tips or content that's not about selling all the time so that then you're not just sending promo emails once, you know, every six weeks and then you wonder why your email marketing doesn't work. Exactly. I've worked for some companies that turn over multi-millions of dollars and we were very much on the proviso that we send one Mm sales-focused email a week and then one to two just Mm -hmm. lifestyle content, like not selling, like sharing blog posts or sharing styling tips or people love to hear different things and they love testimonials. So share what your other customers are Mm. doing. Like the power of testimonials is far, 
far beyond anything that you could actually write yourself. Yeah. And that's where that user-generated content comes in again now. It's like, you know, the more you can get that from your actual customers and then you can use that in terms of either whether it's your you know, image or whether it's a video or whether it's a testimonial, it's all user-generated because it's from other people, right? 100%. And it's just society. Like society as a whole, people want what other people have. Yeah. And I look at brands and I see amazing brands that do this, like go to skincare, do this brilliantly, mm-hmm. where they share testimonials and video testimonials. The more you can have of that to share on email marketing, the better it is. And you put that into your abandoned cart flows and your browse abandonment flows and the products just sell themselves. Yeah. And I think that's where um, I think of it as, yeah, I, I believe it's a service that you're providing for your customers because you're showing them how it's used, you're giving them helpful tips, you're giving them helpful information. And, again, I think, you know, people get overwhelmed with creating the content for the email, but this is where it should all work together, your content as well, in terms of, it, as you mentioned, you know, a blog, um, you talk about that could then become your email, which then become your social media sort of posts and stuff too. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to reinvent everything and emails no. all new content. No, not at all. And you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, I think a study by Harvard showed that if people can view the same content three times, they're 99% more likely to make a purchase. Mm. So if you've got consistent like cons- like if if your content's consistent across the board in your Instagram and your email marketing and your Facebook mm. that's all you need and i've seen this work so well where you can have like a monthly wrap up email or mm-hmm. what's happened this month on Instagram and things like that people love to see that mm. and if your content's consistent and you're sharing like what you're sharing about on Instagram you're sharing about an email you can't go wrong Mm, yeah okay so it's just making sure that yeah you realize that it's not about reinventing everything but being smarter about the way you you use your content as well and that's yeah that's definitely something that I think people need help with because there's a lot to happen a lot to get done and a lot to you know a lot of ways to market and a lot of ways to try and run your business so it's like how do you be smarter about it 100%. I think overwhelm comes into a lot because people think I need to reinvent the wheel. I can't send what I, like I can't put an email, what I put on Instagram and no, Mm. like that's absolutely not true. You can 100% do that. Obviously where email marketing stands out a little bit differently, it's the technicality that comes into it. Mm. So you need to make sure that it will land in inboxes. Mm -hmm. But if you have an engaged audience, that's always going to happen. Yeah. And so what are your recommendations for how, you mentioned it briefly before because um, but how often to email? And I know not everyone is going to be the same because it probably does depend mm-hmm. on your list size as well. But what would you recommend? Okay, so it look, it really does vary. I would recommend anything from one to four emails a week mm-hmm. depending on the size of your list and also depending on how much you're segmenting. I wouldn't recommend sending three to four emails to the same mm-hmm. audience size every week yeah. at all, but I definitely think you should be sending no matter how big your list is, whether you've got a hundred or ten thousand, you need to be sending at least one lifestyle based email and one sales focused email a week. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. And, and the reason we do that is purely just to keep the audience engaged mm. and to keep them listening and keep them, you know, excited to open and excited to see what you've got. And exactly. Like yeah. And, okay. and if that feels too much for you, then at least one. Like you. need to have one. If you have a list size sort of under 600, I would say one email a week is fine. Yeah. But then again, you need to be doing that one email a week and then segmenting to your VIPs or to another audience Mm. purely then so you're building up recognition for your spam filters as well. Yeah. Okay. And so what sort of – do you have any suggestions on how people should can build their list? Like is that something that you talk to clients about or work with clients on as well? 100%. So one thing that I am really, really big on is acquisition. Mm -hmm. I'm not a huge lover of Facebook ads, but I believe in them 100% for acquisition Mm -hmm. because that's how you find new customers. And the best way to find a new customer is to have like a competition. So enter to win a $250 voucher Mm -hmm. or enter to win a 20% discount Mm -hmm. or sign up to. Yeah. Sign up for a 20% discount. The fact is the world we live in, people will not give you their email address for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. It's got to be some incentive. 100%. So we need to incentivize them to sign up and then we need to have a great welcome flow to bring them straight through into Mm. the customer journey. Yeah. How many emails would you say in your welcome flow? Look, it really varies. I have customers that have five emails in their welcome flow. Mm -hmm. I have a company I work with in the US who has 21 emails in their welcome flow. 
<laughs> so it really just depends. Yeah. In saying that, that's not 21 emails to everyone. Like we segment that out. Yeah, and it's not and in one that's week. That's what I believe in. No, and it's not in one <laughs> week, but that's what I believe in. So you can segment out like customers that haven't used their welcome discount and all sorts of things. So, mm-hmm. the, again, the level of customization comes into it. Yeah. But it really varies. But for those people that are just getting started in email marketing, I I would recommend three to five emails in their welcome flow. Yeah, that sounds and they're like spread out suggest. over like a two month yeah. period. Yeah. I go through that in my program actually as well. And this is the thing, Amazing. like the reason we we know talking to you as well is like, well I, I help clients with what they should be doing and how to go about it and if they're doing it themselves. And you're helping clients with like setting it all up for them and managing it all for them. So it's like not everyone can do um you know either of those things. So it's like, how can we work together to sort of show people like, what are the options? So this is the whole thing like you and my sort of um, play on things is like what you need to be doing, how you can do it. And this is what you can do your, and the thing is that lots of, it's really important for clients to sort of understand that as well before they go, I think so too. It all over to, to think to someone else. Yeah, no, I definitely think so. It can be a little bit scary to hand over your email marketing in its entirety, yeah. but there is so much that goes into an email. I think so many people are under the false impression that it's just press send yeah. and it's not. Like the literal testing, I export every single email that I send into a separate testing program mm-hmm. and I test it for device. I test it for spam filter recognition. I test it for SEO. And that's a huge, huge thing. And I think that sometimes people can get a bit lost with that. Mm-hmm. And I think that the easiest thing to do is just to start simple. Like obviously there's a lot of brands that are in the financial position to be able to hand it over. And if mm. you can hand it over, then I 100% suggest you do. But if you can't, like doing your course and learning like the fundamentals of it, I think is a great way to start. Mm-hmm. And just always keep in mind that testing is a big thing. Yes. Yeah. And on to that, we're going to have a, we'll have a little Instagram live actually talking about that sort of stuff too, in terms of, you know, like for Black Friday and, you know, making your, sure you're ready for different promotional periods, all those things. Because 100%. email is the way to connect with your customers because it's busy and noisy out there. And, and I guess that's one thing too, like clients will say, really email, no one opens their emails anymore, or I don't open my emails. I don't, I don't sign up to anyone. So why would anyone else? Like uh, knowing that not everyone's behavior is the same as well. I think so. Email marketing is the number one revenue generator across Australia and the US. Mm-hmm. It out trumps Facebook ads. It out trumps everything mm-hmm. purely because it might not feel like everyone's opening your emails, but they are. And the amazing thing about email marketing is it can sit there. Like someone can go back and read an email two or three times Mm. and they aren't always going to see the same ad two or three times. Mm. So I think for me, the biggest thing is that an email, it's always there. Yeah. Yeah. And they can forward it to people and they can show it to other people. Yeah. And I think that that's a really big thing. Yeah. Okay. And also it is, um, as you say, it's got a long life. Well, it's got a short lifespan in terms of it hits their mailbox, but yeah. people could open it from anywhere from, you know, obviously the first minute it pops in to th- three weeks later or whatever. Yeah, it might be. 100%. But that's the thing. Yeah. That's exactly it. So it's got a much longer lifespan yeah. than any other marketing collateral, I guess you could say. Yeah. And if you can, and that's just where you need to personalise things too, as you say, segmenting and also personalising with names and all that sort of thing as well. 100%. I can't can't stress enough how important it is to segment, how important it is to talk to people by their first name. And there's so many ways that you can do that, like collecting birthdays and sending birthday emails. Mm -hmm. SMS is also another amazing thing that Mm -hmm. comes under email marketing these days. So there's so many ways that we can do it. But the more information you can collect about your customer, and you can collect this on your pop-up form, on your website Mm -hmm. the better because you've got more ways to talk to them yeah yeah I love that and I think that's that's definitely something to mention the sms marketing like how to use that and I think because you can do it through Clavio, right it's all through yes you can system so uh I I believe that it's a really effective way to break through the noise but use sparingly so it's not 100% very sparingly I think for I've, I get ones from brands and I probably would get them, you know, maybe once a month or once a quarter from a brand. Like it's not huge. No. And I only recommend really using SMS marketing for sales. Mm -hmm. And if you want to run like SMS only promos, it's a really good thing to do for that. But again, use sparingly because you don't want to saturate people with it. Yeah. And, and, you know, I got it through recently. I, I signed up through email to the SMS 
so I could get early access to this sale. And I and I did. And then I, as soon as I got it on my phone, I bought something within the first sort of like half an hour because I got it so you know, cut through the noise of like, oh, it's landed. Okay. Exactly. I'd signed up and I was super excited to buy something because I knew things would go quickly in this warehouse sale. I I honestly think SMS should be used, but as I, like, as we've said, it should be used sparingly, but I think for sales and for like your once a year clearances, it is such an amazing tool. Mm -hmm. So I think that everyone should have it set up. That and reviews. Reviews are another thing that people should have because again, People want what other people have. So the more you can share that, mm. the better. And in terms of review, so just basically having that app set up so that through the purchase, you know, flow. So essentially it's automated. You're not going through and asking every single no, person. No, no, It's all automated so that you get um, the, you know, the email goes out to people to ask for that review and then where it pops in to your system also is automated, right? Yeah, 100%. So there's like a lot of great platforms. Like Clavio has its own review system. Mm-hmm. Then there's Okendo. And another really, really great one is Judge Me. Yeah. And that's a really good way for people to start. Yeah. And you can sync that with your email marketing platform and it just ticks along. And that's brilliant. Like you can send people reminders. You can offer incentives to leave reviews and you can publish them straight to your website. Yeah. So you can't go wrong. Yes. And I talked about that in the boost your conversion rate on, on when I do you know, boost your sales the yep. other day when my program in that, that like you have to have that. So having a system do. to do it makes it a lot easier. 100%. Yeah. And it's something that will always, it's such a good sales tool. Like reviews are one of the best sales tools there are. Mm. And as you say, you can use them not just to convert higher on your website, but to actually to use them in your email marketing as well. And on exactly. social. Social too. Yeah. So. And on social as well. Yeah. Amazing. All right. So if people want to work with you, what sort of things do you actually do? So as you said, you set the system up, you can do ongoing emails as well. Um, Mm -hmm. Anything else in particular? No. So essentially there's three ways to work with me. There is a complete setup. Mm -hmm. Then there is our ongoing monthly campaigns where I take over all your email marketing. Mm -hmm. So I do all of the things and look after everything. And then I also offer a day with Sam. And that's more for people that when I have like 10 or 15 campaigns done, ready to go, and then they don't want to think about it for a while. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people do prefer that purely because then it's not that ongoing monthly retainer. Mm-hmm. Or we could spend a day setting up your entire Clavio system. Yeah, amazing. Okay. So there's, yeah, a few different ways to work with me. Yep. And on Instagram, you're the Samantha Taylor. I certainly am. Thank you so much for being here, Samantha. I'm really excited about what, um, you know, people sort of can take from this and what sort of things they need to set up. And as we said, if you want help with what that looks like and how to do that, I can help with the actual, you know, process and talking you through that sort of thing. And then if you want someone to just take it all over and do it for you, and, and then you are the perfect person to help you with that sort of area. So, Absolutely. Um, it's amazing. Thanks so much, Mel. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Lotco Business Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure you subscribe to receive future episodes as they are released. And I'd be so, so grateful for a review on Apple Podcast. If you would like a copy of the show notes or any of the links mentioned today, please jump onto my website at thelotco.com.au forward slash podcast. Have an amazing week and I look forward to chatting to you again soon.